Good morning, Philippines! Kamusta po kayo? I'm back. My name is John and uh, this is just a quick uh, live stream and uh, since I was actually actually currently doing my laundry and uh, naisa lang ko pa so I got nothing to do so might as well uh, stream and uh, you know talk about something relevant. Talk about something that uh, what do you call this? Something that can help people nowadays with respect to their health And of course, uh, kidney function. So I decided to talk about renal failure today. So I noticed na ang dami daming mga pasyente ngayon na undergoing dialysis. So so I think it's a high time for us to be aware what renal failure is all about, how bad it is. And of course, in order for us to appreciate, not really appreciate, in order in order for us to understand what renal failure is, we need to go back to the basic and understand what are the functions of the kidneys and what will be the effects if you will have renal failure or renal dysfunction okay so hold on guys because we will be right back in a few seconds oh not that one <clears throat> Your opinion matters, so let your voice be heard. Let's talk about nursing. Right here. Rapid response with John. Okay, pabati muna. Hello to uh, Yasmin Laila or Leila. I don't know if that's how you say your last name. Okay, thanks for watching and hello to ang dami ko morning ito ngayon dito. Hindi ko alam kung oh, sino ko unahin ko. Oh my God. And of course, may nagpapakomment. Hello sa kasino to. May mga names na hindi nagpa-pop up. Ano, updated naman yung Facebook ko na app. Hello to Levi, who's this? Levi Kaylen Agpad. And hello to Uh, miracle, that miracle, the the Gales, is it the Gales? Then hello to Sh- Cheryl Tubera. Hello, oh hello, kung masakit na. Hi to uh, Amy Lavadia and uh, I mentioned Yasmin and of course I mentioned Levi. Hi there. Kung masakit po kayo guys. Hopefully, I know. Hopefully, kung may mga kikinig sa akin ngayon, uh, mga dialysis nurse, if you want to share your inputs, anything you learn about dialysis, please let me know. And hello to Mary Ann Alipio. Hi there. Kumusta? Today is actually May 9, my time zone, and it's 1.54 p.m. Okay? So, technically, it's May 10 in the Philippines. It's, uh, I believe, almost 3 o'clock in the morning. So anyway, wherever you are, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, hello po. And hello to Mikal, Mikal, Mikalis GamePod. Daghang salamat, Sir John. Why sa pa yan? Tara, Mikal, daghang salamat. Oh my God. Kumusta ka, Mikali, Mikalis GamePod? Bakit yun yung pangalan mo? I, I believe you're a gamer. Ano, ano ba nilalaro mo? What games usually? Ako mahilig, mahilig din ako ano mahilig din ako sa mga oh, mga games pero not really not much sa mga online. I am with uh, yung mga usual na mga games. Syempre alam mo na anong ano yung genre ko ano. So na, na, if, I'm not sure kung naabutan niyo pa yung mga Nintendo na mga Super Mario, yung mga naabutan ko dati, Battle City. Kayo kasi ang dami ng mga online games eh. Sabi ni Mikalis, GamePod, I just watch your infection control. Oh, that's good. So you're planning to take the qualifying examination anytime soon? Are you planning to take the NCLEX? With, uh, with respect to infection control, focus more sa mga di- different diseases and their infection control prevention. Uh, infection prevention and uh, w- pay attention as well with the different PPEs. Okay. Saan mo na panood yung ano? Saan mo na panood uh, Michaelis yung ano, infection control na video? And we also have thanks for watching to Pass de la Cruz and Patloy 
Dairit. And hello to Lauren Miera. Hi there. Thanks, Sir John. Welcome. Ipang ako nagsisimula ng lecture. Thanks na kaagad. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. So anyway, guys, if you have any questions or concerns, um, as, as I discuss renal failure or renal dysfunction, please, please feel free to comment below. And if I know the answer, I will let you know. I will answer it. If, I, if not, I will also let you know that I don't. I don't want to give false information here. So, isang oras pa bago matapos yung laundry ko. So, I still have one hour to discuss renal failure. Okay? Where is that? Okay. So, let's... Okay, meron pa pala. Good evening, Sir John. Watching from KSA, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Oh my God! Kumusta? And here, sabi ni Mika, Mikalis Gamepod, here on YouTube, Sir John, your video five years ago. Oh my God, that was long time ago. I am watching all of your videos every day. Oh my God, thank you so much. You know what? Send me a message here on Facebook and I can give you some some updated videos, okay? Uh, all my videos sa, sa YouTube, it's an old video. So, may mga bago po tayo mga videos. Let me know. I can send it to you guys. Watching from California. Hi. Hello to Mary Marithes. Marithes. Kumusta kayo diyan sa California? Kumusta weather diyan? Pa summer na ano? Oh my god. Last summer last year, I went to Las Vegas. Sasabi ko sa sarili ko, I don't want to go back there during summertime. Grabe talaga ang init. Mas mainit pa siya sa Pilipinas. Alam mo yung feeling na <clears throat> Alam mo yung feeling na pagbukas mo ng oven, yung yung init ng oven na na, na napupunta sa mukha mo, yun yung feeling. Meron pa dito, hello, hi Sir John, watching from New York City. Oh my God, tarang layo ng mga sudyante ko ngayon ha. New York, I'll be in New York siguro mga, kailan ba? July or August? Uh, sabi ni Marithes, uh, yes po, medyo summer na po. Yeah, nakakamiss din yung, okay, yung California. Uh, kailan ba ko nasa California? I was there last year during the surgery of my cousin. So speaking of surgery, hello, shout out to all nurses sa, sa ano, sa, ano tawag dito, sa, nakalimutan ko na yung hospital. There's a big hospital there. Parang it's, it's a big network. So thank you so much for taking good care of my cousin when he had his open heart surgery. Hello to maldita ako. Bakit ka naging maldita? Anong problema natin? Hello, Sir John. Watching from my phone. Ayan. Kami mga pabati. Ano ba mag-lecture ba ako? Greetings lahat. So anyway, we'll talk about renal failure. So before we'll talk about this this, this problem, this issue, I want to discuss the functions of the kidneys first. Okay? So I think it's, it's important for us to appreciate the kidneys before we will dive into the different disturbances. Ano sabi ni Mikali? You look young, good and young. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my God, hindi ko talaga babawiin yan. Thank you talaga. Pero sabi nila, age is just a number. So I believe, I, I, believe, I strongly believe in that in that phrase. Right? Ito pa isa. Hi sir, watching from KSN. May dalaw na akong sudyante from Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Kayo ba yung batch na napag-lecturan ko sa final coaching? Yung nag-take na examination sa local board? Just let me know, okay? Okay, guys. So let's talk about renal failure. Okay, let me share my screen and we'll talk about it in a bit. There. Let's open our whiteboard. May na pa dito, newbie, sir. Anong newbie? Newbie ka dito. So, welcome. Mm -hmm. Where is that? Whiteboard. Oh, what is this? Ah, 
maybe from a previous topic. So we will talk about renal failure, okay? Before that, sabi ko nga, we'll talk about renal uh, functions of the kidneys first, okay? So when you talk about kidneys, the kidneys is actually part of the urinary system, okay? Remember, we have different body systems, okay? We have a lot of body systems. And by the way, speaking of body systems, let me know if you want me to discuss one of the major body systems uh, in one of my stream. But for this, okay, for this stream, we'll talk about renal failure, Okay. So again, so when I say re urinary system. Now, by the way, when you say system, what is that? A system is a, a combination, not a combination. It's a group of different organs in the body functioning as one. Okay, so a system, it is composed of several organs in the body functioning as one. So if it's a urinary system, it is composed of several organs. Okay, so what are structures or organs? Okay, under urinary system. Of course, you have the kidneys. Okay, by the way, you we have two kidneys, the right kidney and the left kidney. And don't forget that one kidney is slightly lower than the other one. Okay, and uh, it, it's, is it possible to survive with only one kidney? Yes, it is. Okay, so may mga pasyente po tayo na iisa lang yung kidney nila uh, because of some conditions. May mga pasyente din tayo na congenital na isa lang yung kidney. Okay, so pwede po tayo makasurvive. We can, you can live normally okay, with only one kidney provided that you have to be very cautious with, with your lifestyle, with what you eat. Okay, because syempre pag nasira yung isang kidney, wala ka, na pang, wala ka ng spare and that will be a big a, a big problem. Okay? So again, we have the right kidney and the left kidney. Next, another function, another structure in the urinary system will be, of course, the ureters. Since you have two kidneys, expect that we have two ureters as well. The ureters is actually a tube that will connect the urine from the kidney to the bladder. Okay? So ibig sabihin, if this is the kidney and this is another kidney, Okay, there is a tube that connects or drains or directs the urine from the kidney going to the bladder. Okay. So these are the kidneys, uh, the kidneys. These are the ureters. Okay, these are the ureters. So we have the right and the left ureter and this is the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder uh, houses temporarily the urine, okay? Uh, approximately, the bladder can hold about 500 ml of urine. And how many ml usually is in the bladder that you can feel the urgency to void? If the bladder has about 200 to 300, sorry, 200 to 300 ml of urine, that's the time usually you feel the urge to void. You feel the urge to pee, okay? And guess what? Uh, since it, it no normally houses temporarily the urine, there is also a risk of infection in the bladder. And sometimes the bladder got distended or the bladder has sustained some inflammation. You call that condition cystitis. Okay, and this another structure here, so I mentioned the urinary bladder. And the fourth is your urethra. This part is the urethra. Okay, the urethra is actually the tube that serves as the outlet of the urine, okay, from the bladder out. Okay, so the length of the urethra, def okay, uh, the, the, le the length of your urethra depends on the gender. Uh, for ladies, the urethra is relatively short, about one to two inches long, whereas for male, Siyempre, the longer the penis, the longer is the urethra, right? But the, the point here that I want to emphasize is that for ladies, since your urethra is, is, is short, one to two inches, so ibig sabihin, mas prone sila sa UTI, okay? Or urinary tract infection, okay? Now, the primary structure in the urinary system are actually the kidneys, okay? This is the main guy, okay? The main guy. And when you talk about kidneys, the basic structural unit of the kidney of the urinary system is actually your, hold on, are the nephrons, okay, nephrons. And guess what? One kidney, okay, in each kidney has approximately one million nephrons, okay? 
every each kidney has approximately a million of nephrons. Now, this is the basic structural unit. And I believe I mentioned nephrons from a previous uh, stream. Uh, I, I would talk about the different structures in the nephrons, the different tubules there. So di ko na siya uulitin. Ang tandaan lang is that one function of the kidney is actually to eliminate urine, okay? And uh, speaking of elimination, the elimination formation of urine is influenced by the GFR, okay? This is what they call the glomerular filtration rate. You need to understand this para hindi kayo mahirapan mamaya when we talk about renal dysfunction. The normal GFR or glomerular filtration rate is about 120 ml per minute. Okay? So that is the filtration rate. Okay? The glomerular filtration rate. And having said that, the, the kidneys now will produce a, okay, a urine output. Okay? A urine output ranging from 30, sorry, 30 to 60 ml per hour. So just a heads up, the GFR is expressed in ml per minute. The urinary output is expressed in ml per hour. If there is a decrease in the GFR, that will also decrease the urinary output of your patient. Okay. If there is an increase in the filtration rate, it may also cause an increase in the urinary output. Okay. That's 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 very simple. They are directly proportional. Okay. So the main guy here is the kidney, and we will talk about kidney functions. Okay. So I am going to clear my slides, and we will talk about different functions of the kidney. Okay, so let's. So what I'm going to do here is we will divide the functions of the kidneys into two. Okay, so we have this what we call non-excretory. Then we also have excretory function. Excretory. So what is the difference? We say non-excretory. These are functions of the kidneys that has nothing to do with the ability to eliminate. Okay, non-excretory. So we say excretory functions. These are functions of the kidneys that has something to do with excretion or elimination. Okay, so there is such thing as excretory and non-excretory functions. Okay, now let's begin with the non-excretory. Number one, your kidneys play a vital role okay, towards what? Towards RBC production. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, your kidneys will also affect blood formation, especially your RBC how come? Your, your kidneys will produce a specific hormone, okay? So there is a hormone produced by the kidney, and we call that hormone as your erythropoietin. Okay? An erythropoietin is a form of an erythropoietic hormone or erythropoietic factor. It means to say that it is a hormone that will stimulate the red bone marrow to produce RBC, Okay? Your RBC. So it begs to be in, it's an erythrocase, a hormone that increases your RBC production. That is why don't be surprised that if a patient has a renal dysfunction, okay, what accompanies that kidney injury or kidney problem is anemia. Okay? So pwede ka pala magkaroon ng anemia kung may kidney problem ka. Yes, because the kidneys will also help produce RBC to be specific, your red blood cells. Okay? Your by, by, by a hormone called erythropoietin. Another non excretory function of the kidney is that it helps with your vitamin D synthesis. Okay? Now, vitamin D, you call this a sure calciferol. Calciferol. Some book, they call it, call it calciferol. Now, what is this okay, vitamin D all about? Your vitamin D is important for calcium absorption. Okay? Calcium absorption. Now, Ibig sabihin, pag yung pasyente pala natin may kidney problem or kidney dysfunction, it will affect vitamin D synthesis. So once vitamin D is affected, by the way, vitamin D helps with your calcium absorption. So if you don't have any vitamin D, if you, have, if you lack vitamin D, it may affect calcium level in the body. Okay? So you may end up having hypocalcemia or a decrease in your blood calcium level. Okay? So that's, that's, that's essential. Okay, pag sinabi ko namang excretory function, okay, excretory function. Now, what are those functions of the kidney that has something to do with elimination? Of course, you have your urine formation. Okay, I already mentioned this. I said that the GFR, okay, 
is about 120 ml per minute. And the urinary output ranges from 30 to 60 ml per hour. May mga instances po that the GFR will decrease. Okay, there's a lot of factors. Number one, there is a possibility that your GFR will, 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 be, will, will slow down. Okay, your GFR will be low if you're hypotensive, if, if your patient has a decrease in the blood volume. Okay, now if there's a decrease in the cardiac output, if the patient is in the state of shock. Why? All those conditions that I mentioned will result to decrease in the renal perfusion. So, ibig sabihin, if, if your patient is, is having hypotension, a decrease in the blood pressure, if the patient has a decrease in the cardiac output, maybe second to an existing cardiac problem, cardiogenic shock, if a patient is having a decrease in the blood volume, okay, because of massive fluid loss or massive blood loss hemorrhage, it affects perfusion to the kidneys. If there's no blood enters the kidney, then it follows that there will be a decrease in the GFR. A decrease in the glomerular filtration rate will decrease the urinary output. Okay? The second function, excretory function of the kidney is what? Waste product elimination. Waste products elimination. Okay? So when I say waste products, I am talking about nitrogenous waste. We call it nitrogenous waste because, again, they contain nitrogen, just like your blood, urea, nitrogen, your BUN, okay? And not only that, okay, not only that, you have your okay, BUN, you have your creatinine, okay? Then you also have here other nitrogenous, other waste products. You have your urea, okay? And by the way, speaking of urea, urea is actually derived from a substance called protein. Do you know that? Okay. Now remember, when when protein is ingested, the body will absorb that and then metabolized, and the byproduct of protein is what we call ammonia. Okay, ammonia is toxic in the body, especially to your nerves. It causes uh, irritation in the nerves. Okay, that is why the body needs to convert ammonia into a less toxic form. That is why when ammonia enters the liver, the liver converts ammonia to become urea, which is a less toxic form. And once it's urea, it is now the responsibility of the kidneys to eliminate urea through your urine formation. So as you pee, as you pee, the urine contains urea. So the thing that I need to the need the thing that I need to emphasize here is that if a patient's blood test has an elevated ammonia, okay. So don't forget this. Pag masyadong mataas ang ammonia level ng pasyente sa dugo, you suspect that probably there is an issue in the patient's liver. Okay? Pag ang tumataas naman sa dugo ng pasyente ay urea, ibig sabihin hindi siya na ipalabas ng kidney. So most likely, the patient has an existing kidney or renal issue. Okay? So that is why if a patient has an elevated ammonia, okay, liver issue, one medication given to our patient is what? Lactulose. We give lactulose, it can be given PO, or if not, we give it as an enema to promote ammonia elimination. Okay? Or, if pag masyadong mataas yung urea ng pasyente, we can give diuretics. Okay? We can give diuretics medication in order to allow the patient to pee in order to promote urea elimination. Other than that, if the goal is to decrease ammonia, decrease urea, you can also do dietary modification by decreasing protein intake of the patient. Remember, the, mo the moment you increase protein intake, most likely your ammonia will bump up, your, your urea will also bump up. So if your goal is to decrease ammonia, to decrease urea, you need also to modify the dietary, uh, dietary uh, diet of your patient. There must be dietary modification. Okay? Next, number three, Another excretory function of the kidney is that your kidneys play a vital role with your fluids and electrolyte balance. So how can kidneys affect fluid and electrolyte balance? So one example here is using your renin angiotensin okay, mechanism. Okay, so remember, I explained renin angiotensin mechanism or renin angiotensin aldosterone system, your RAS. So previous uh, stream ko, I said that uh, once there is hypotension, once there is a decrease in the blood volume, uh, an enzyme is being activated, your renin, and then 
there will be there will be promotion of conversion of angiotensin one to become angiotensin two. Okay, so then when there's activation, when there's transformation of angiotensin one to become angiotensin two, then it will affect fluid balance. Okay, and number four. Okay, number four. Another excretory function of the kidney is that uh, it is important for hydrogen, hydrogen elimination, hydrogen ions elimination. Elimination. So it means that if you have an if you have an existing renal problem and hydrogens are hydrogen ions are not eliminated, so you know the effect will be hydrogen retention. Hydrogen in the body retains; they will accumulate, and that will give you acidosis. Okay. So technically, these are basic or common functions of the kidneys. So you have your excretory and non-excretory functions of the kidneys. And guess what? A patient with renal dysfunction or a patient with renal failure, to be specific, renal failure, both excretory and non-excretory functions of the kidney of the kidneys are affected. So lahat ito affected if you have renal failure. Okay? So at least may idea ka na, ah, yun pala nangyayari. Okay? So can you imagine this? If 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 the kidneys are affected, and you cannot pee, water stays in the body. Okay, so you will end up having what? You will end up having edema formation, so you become edematous. So you'll be surprised, bakit nag nagmamanas yung pasyente? No? Bakit nagmamanas yung pasyente? Bakit ubu nung ubu yung patient? Bakit yung pasyente may weight gain? Okay, bakit nagkakaroon ng edema yung pasyente sa lower extremities? It's because of water retention. Okay, apart from that, sir, bakit mataas yung BP ng pasyente? Hypertensive yung patient. Hypertension there is related to water congestion, water retention. Okay, so a lot of things will happen if you have renal failure. Okay, why? Both excretory and non-excretory functions of the kidneys are actually affected. So I think we're ready to discuss renal failure now. So pag sinabi po natin renal failure, okay, so renal renal failure technically is what it refers to an inability inability of the kidneys to function well okay so in short the kidneys are not doing what it's supposed to do okay inability of the kidneys to function well that's a generally a definition of your renal failure Okay, just to make it simple. And guess what? Doctors were able to figure out the three common causes of renal failure. Oh, may mga three common causes pala. Meron. So what are the three common causes of renal failure? Okay, number one, if you have an existing renal disease. So if you have an existing renal problem and you didn't do anything about it, okay, existing renal disease, wala kang ginawa. Okay, pinabayaan mo lang. It can progress. It may can lead to renal failure. So give me an example of an existing renal problem, okay, that can progress to renal failure. Example is your nephritic. Nephritic, nephritic syndrome. Or another example of a renal disease that can may, that may progress to renal failure, ATN. What is ATN? ATN stands for acute tubular necrosis. Okay, those are just common renal problems. And another cause, another cause of renal failure is if you have an existing systemic conditions. Okay, there are certain conditions, systemic conditions that can cause renal failure. Okay, give me an example of systemic conditions that can cause renal failure. Patient having shock. Okay. Patient having shock, regardless of the type of shock, may it be hypovolemic shock, cardiogenic shock, uh, or septic shock, or other forms of distributive shock that can cause decreased perfusion to the kidneys can lead to renal failure. What else? Meds. Please be careful with medications. There are medications said to be nephrotoxic. So we say nephrotoxic medications, these are medications once taken by the patient, especially for a long period of time or in high doses can cause injury to the kidneys. Now, one good example of medication that is said to be nephrotoxic, one good example will be your analgesic. Okay, your analgesic medication. Okay, so be cautious because most of analgesic are over the counter. 
Okay. And not only analgesics, some NSAIDs as well. You know, NSAIDs, these are non steroidal anti inflammatory medications. There are medications. Okay. I'm not saying that, not, I'm not saying that all analgesics can cause kidney injury, but there are analgesics. Most, not actually all analgesic, most analgesics can cause kidney problem or kidney issues. Okay. So be, please be, be cautious with that. That is why we really discourage you self medicating. We discourage you just buying any over the counter medications because when you take them too much, if you overdo them, instead of doing good to your body, you will harm your vital structures. And guess what? Eventually you go to the doctor and then nasa late stage ka na. Okay? And we don't want the thing to happen. That is why as nurses, we always tell people, we always tell our patients do not self-medicate. At pag sinabi ng doktor, take this for this specific duration for seven days, you take it for seven days. Hindi pa din na three days pa lang feeling mo okay na pakiramdam mo, you stop taking the meds. No, you have to complete the treatment course. And please, no, do not self-medicate. That's, that's one common issue that we encounter. Now, ano ba, yung mga, ano ba yung mga complications or possible issues if you self-medicate? Number one, you, there's, there's a probability that you're not addressing the, the issues correctly. Remember, may mga, may mga gamot designed to treat a specific disease. Just like your antibiotic. May mga antibiotic designed to treat gra, gra, uh, gram-positive microorganism. May mga antibiotic designed to treat a gram-negative microorganism. Okay? So you need to consult your doctor because the doctor doctors know better what medication is given to, your, okay, to, to, to you. Okay, that is why you have to go to your primary care provider. Another another issue if you if you self medicate is that either you you overdose yourself or you underdose yourself. Again, there's problem with your treatment. Okay, or number four, if you take a lot of medications and sometimes may meron pa tayo mga tina iniinom na mga herbal meds, there is always a risk of interactions of those medications or agents. So drug interactions, okay, is all is. Can 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 have a devastating effect in the kidneys or in the liver of your patient of of of, of a person. I can still remember I have a patient uh, three three months ago. He he is very health conscious. Sa sobrang health conscious niya, ayon niya uminum na mga na mga prescribed medicine. Ang inginagawa niya inum lang siya ng inum na mga herbal meds. Okay, herbal meds, herbal meds, herbal meds. You know what happened? Nasira yung liver ng patient. Okay, and ngayon sinasira yung liver, nasa late stage siya, so terminally ill yung patient. So sabi ko, oh my God, I cannot blame him. Okay, but sad to say is sometimes with what we do, okay, we were not very mindful. Do nakakar yung problema sa sarili natin. That is why I always stress this: na you have to see your, you have to see your doctor. Okay, there must be a regular checkup. Kaya nga sabi ko, whatever happens, I will never stop the streaming because I think this is one of my calling to you know spread uh, education, uh, health awareness to people. Not only during the review program, but of course as came my knowledge about about health. Okay, so that's part of my responsibility to educate people. Okay, so please don't forget that. So medications. There are medications that can cause injury in your in, in your in your kidneys. Not only kidneys, but also other structures. What else? Other systemic conditions. Example: uh, patient receiving contrast or dye. Okay, this may fall under medication. Contrast or dye. Lalong lana if a patient is is to undergo a specific diagnostic test. Common here is your angiogram or angiography. Remember, one of our nursing responsibility if the patient needs to undergo a procedure that requires contrast or dye elimination is to strictly uh, evaluate kidney function of the patient. So how do we do this? We have to make it sure that you have an adequate urinary output. We have to make it sure that the BUN creatinine level is within normal range. We have to make it sure that the potassium level 
in your blood is normal. Any deviation, lalo na increase. Pag mataas yung potassium mo in the blood, mataas yung BUN mo, mataas yung creatinine mo, there is a decrease mababa ang urinary output. Most likely, the doctors will not use a contrast or dye because, again, it will further cause injury to your kidneys. But if in case na kailangan talagang gumamit ng contrast or dye, okay, may mga alternative po na ginagawa yung doktor Okay, sa hospital. Sometimes they will hydrate the patient okay, before administering the contrast. Then after giving the contrast, they will do the test. After that, they will hydrate the patient again to promote dye or contrast elimination. But nevertheless, be cautious if your patient is taking a contrast or dye because contrast or dyes are also considered to be, uh, what do you call this, nephrotoxics. But again, not all contrast or dye are nephrotoxics. Okay? Gaya nung ginagamit na contrast pag nagpapa uh, echocardiogram ka kasi pwede mag gumamit ng contrast sa echo. Uh, may, may mga contrast tayo na non-nephrotoxic. Okay? So, I think that, 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 that's my point here is that you need to check patient's renal function before you do contrast or dye administration. Okay? But again, sabi ko nga, hindi lahat na contrast or dye nephrotoxic. But nevertheless, check kidney function of your patient, okay? Another systemic condition is diabetes mellitus. Why? Because one complication of diabetes mellitus is that it causes nephropathy, okay? Nephropathy. So, uh, marami tayong mga pasyenteng diabetic, if you notice yung mga diabetic patient natin, will usually die out of complications, not because of diabetes, diabetes mellitus, but perceive it's more on the complications associated with DM. So it could be DM uh, as a complication niya stroke, complication niya heart attack, complication niya uh, renal failure. There are a lot of complications of diabetes, but nevertheless, the complications of diabetes are actually categorized into three. So first, diabetes mellitus can cause neuropathy. So neuropathy, it can cause damage, injury in your nerves, or it may cause microangiopathy. There is an injury damage in the small vessels. So small blood vessels in your eyes. It may cause uh, retinopathy, blindness because of diabetes mellitus. Or microangiopathy that causes damage, injury in the kidneys. I mentioned that. Or another complication is macroangiopathy. So there is an injury damage in the large blood vessels in the brain, okay, in your heart, increasing the risk of the patient to have stroke, increasing the risk of the patient to have heart attack. Okay, see, that's how bad diabetes mellitus is. So that is, if you're diabetic, make it sure that your blood sugar is well controlled, that your diabetes is well controlled. Okay. Now another systemic condition. Uh, let's say patient having myocardial infarction or heart attack. Why? Because a patient with heart attack because of an injury, injury in your what do you call this? An injury in your heart, the heart will not pump well. So, pag hindi lang pump na maayos yung heart, walang blood supply sa kidneys, resulting to renal dysfunction. Okay? Renal failure. Okay? And of course, last number three, because remember I said there are three common causes of renal failure. And the third is your urologic, urologic defects. Or shall I say defects? So, give me an example of a urologic problem. Now, once left untreated can cause renal failure. One good example here is your BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia. Ibig sabihin, there is an enlargement in the prostate gland. And by the way, only men will end up having BPH because men, they have prostate gland. Okay? Or another urologic defect is your renal calculi. Renal calculi. Or we call this as your kidney stones. Now, how... Will renal calculi, how can BPH progress or can cause renal failure? Remember, these are the kidneys. Okay, these are the kidneys. These are the ureters. Okay, this is the urinary bladder. And this is the urethra. Correct? Now, let's talk about BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia. This is actually a structure that envelopes the urethra located on the neck of the bladder inferiorly. So this is the prostate gland, okay, encapsulating your urethra. So what happens in your BPH is that when the prostate gland increases its size, okay, pag lumaki yung prostate gland, maiipit po niya ang urethra. So this will result to a condition called urethral stenosis. 
urethral stenosis. There will be narrowing of the urethral opening. So if the urethra is occluded, narrowed, urine outflow is impaired. So the urinary outflow is obstructed, causing urinary retention. So the urine now will fill the bladder, and there is a risk that the urine goes back to the kidney. So there is reflux of urine back to the kidney. So the urine now goes back to the kidney and fills the kidney of your patient. So what will happen now when fluid accumulates inside the kidney? We call that condition as your hydronephrosis. And guess what? If there's hydronephrosis, when fluid accumulates here, it causes damage in the nephrons. Okay? It damages, it causes injury to your kidneys. And when kid kidneys are injured because of fluid accumulation or hydronephrosis, you will end up having renal failure. Okay? Now, what about for renal calculi? Same thing. If there is a kidney stone, okay, there's a stone here in this kidney, in this kidney, so it can cause reflux regurgitation of urine back, causing hydronephrosis here. So it will injure the kidney. Yes, it will. Will you end up having renal failure? No, not yet, because you still have other kidney. Okay, so the other kidney will compensate the other kidney. Remember, I told you that you can survive with only one kidney. That is why in order for renal calculi, okay, kidney stone, okay, to progress or cause renal failure, there must be bilateral obstruction of the kidney, okay? Causing hydronephrosis bilaterally leading to renal failure, okay? So these are three common causes of renal failure. I, I hope, guys, this is very clear, okay? So what happens in your renal failure is that this is just a very brief apothecial. Number one, a patient with renal failure would end up having a decrease in your hydrogen elimination, Remember what did I tell you about the functions of the kidney? The kidneys will promote hydrogen ion elimination. So if you have real failure, hindi na may papalabas ng kidneys ang hydrogen. So there will be decreased hydrogen elimination leading to increase in hydrogen retention. When hydrogen in the body retains, it increases now your hydrogen concentration. And increased hydrogen concentration will result to a condition called metabolic acidosis. So how will you know that there is metabolic acidosis? You do the ABG. And ABG result reveals that there is a decrease in the pH and a decrease in your bicarbonate. Okay, so decrease a low pH, a low bicarb would indicate that there is a decrease that there is metabolic acidosis. So what we usually do here is Usually, doctors will prescribe diuretic. Doctors may prescribe sodium bicarbonate, okay? Your sodium bicarb will help neutralize acidity. Number two, there will also be decrease in your hydrogen, sorry, potassium elimination. So can you imagine this? If the bodies cannot eliminate water, it cannot also eliminate excess electrolytes, just like your potassium. So if potassium is not eliminated, this will result to increase in your potassium retention. So potassium in the body retains, resulting to a condition called hyperkalemia. And by the way, speaking of increased potassium, what is the normal potassium level? The normal potassium level ranges from 3.5 to 5.0 Milli equivalent per liter. Other book, 3.5 to 5.1. Other book, 3.5 to 5.5. But anyway, mataas yung potassium level ng patients. So wag na wag yung kalimutan nito because hyperkalemia is a serious issue, a serious problem. Why? Because if not treated, pag masyadong mataas po ang potassium level sa dugo, it can cause cardiac arrest. Kaya nga, isa sa mga indikasyon that dialysis must be started to patient with renal failure is pag mataas ang potassium level ng patient. Okay? So hyperkalemia is one of the best indicator that dialysis must be initiated. Okay? So ano kay mga possible na gamot na binibigay natin dito pag yung pasyente natin may hyperkalemia? Doctors may give diuretic, especially a potassium-wasting diuretic. Doctors may prescribe kayexalate. Okay, excellent. Generic is that your sodium polystyrene sulfonate, it can be given PO or it can also be given enema. Uh, doctors may also prescribe insulin and glucose. Okay? And of course, number three, patient with renal failure will also have decrease in your phosphate elimination. 
So hindi na ipapalabas ng pasyente yung phosphate. So this will result to an increase in your phosphate retention and this will lead to a condition called hyperphosphatemia. Phosphatemia. So there is an increase in the blood phosphate or phosphorus level. What is the normal phosphorus level? It ranges from 2.5 to 4.5 milligrams per deciliter. If you have a different value, that's fine. Okay, you have to check the unit being used. Maybe you're using milli equivalent or other unit. I'm using milligrams per deciliter. Okay, so what is the problem now? Pag masyado mataas ang phosphorus. Remember, the phosphorus and calcium are inversely proportional. Ibig sabihin, pag masyado mataas ang phosphorus level natin sa dugo, it will cause decreased calcium absorption. Okay, a decrease in calcium absorption will eventually cause what? Will eventually cause hypo, hypocalcemia or a decrease in your calcium level, correct? And again, what is the normal blood calcium level? It ranges from 8.5 to 10.5 milligrams per deciliter. So, masyado mababa yung calcium level ng patient, okay? And remember that calcium is very important for normal cardiac functioning. So, you try to pair this one. Mataas na yung potassium mo, Mababa yung calcium mo, then most likely there is a higher risk for you to have this rhythmia or arrhythmia or abnormal cardiac rhythm. Okay? And if not treated, it can cause what? This rhythmia, arrhythmia, and eventually may cause cardiac arrest. Okay? So guess what? Pag masyado pong mababa ang calcium level ng patient, it may also cause, okay, what? An increase or increased activity of the parathyroid gland. So a hypocalcemia may cause a condition called hyperparathyroidism. Okay? So pwede po overwork, increase ang compensation, okay? increase ang activity ng parathyroid gland. By the way, the parathyroid gland is different from your thyroid. The thyroid is in the anterior, nasa harap. The parathyroid is at the back of your thyroid. Magkaiba po ang thyroid at saka parathyroid. Okay? But anyway, so the patient here will end up having hyperparathyroidism in response to a condition called hypocalcemia. Okay? Next, number four, patient here will have decrease in the sodium resorption. Resorption in the tubules. So if there's decreased sodium resorption in the tubules, this will result to increase in your water retention. Kaya nga kung may water retention ka, you will end up having what? Edema. You will end up having what? Hypertension. You may end up having what? Congestive heart failure. Kung may water retention ka, you will also end up having pulmonary congestion. So why is it why is it that you will end up having pulmonary congestion? Remember, in the basic anatomy physiology, the lungs are very permeable because that is the site for gas exchange. So an increase in your in your fluid volume, fluid level, this will also put risk for fluid congestion because of the permeability of the pulmonary structures. Okay? And of course, number four, number four, there will be decreased waste products elimination. So if waste products are not eliminated, so this will result to accumulation of waste products in the body. So the patient will end up a condition called azotemia. So what is azotemia? Azotemia is a medical term that describes accumulated waste products in the body. So one indication here is that tumataas po ang BUN, tumataas po ang creatinine level ng patient. Okay? So to sum it up, pag ang patient pala may renal failure, renal dysfunction, hindi na may papalabas ng kidneys ang mga dapat na ipalabas sa katawan. So you were, your body now serves as a garbage disposal. Okay, serves as a garbage trash bin. Okay, a garbage bin or a trash bin. Okay, yung mga dapat na itapon natin, hindi na itatapon. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga dapat 
itinapon mo, hindi mo tinapon, so those okay, garbage will accumulate inside the body. Okay? And that will affect your vital structures as well. Not only the kidneys, it will also affect your brain. Okay? Kaya nga kung napansin mo, pag masyado mataas na yung waste product sa katawan, masyado mataas yung BU and CREA, Okay, there's too much. Okay, there's too much waste products in the body. It will affect cognition of your patient. It affects mental status of your patient. Mag 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 magtataka ka. Pa kaya para sa para na sa buang? Ano para sa crazy? Okay, he is talking nonsense. Why? Because too much waste products in the body will alter your cognition, your thinking ability. Okay, and as well as your mental status. Okay? So, yun yun. So, ano, anong mga possible na ginagawa natin dito? Of course, we do, okay, you have your continuous renal replacement therapy. So, dito papasok yung mga medications natin. Dito papasok yung mga dialysis natin. So, it could be a form of peritoneal dialysis or it could be a form of um, hemodialysis. Okay? So, depende po sa condition ng mga pasyente natin. Okay? So, I hope you learned something, guys. So, you call that a renal failure. Here, ano to? Ano sabi dito? Sorry, ngayon ko lang nabasa yung mga comments. Here, uh, Mikali said, you said in one of your videos, 20 years ka na nagle-lecture, pero you look so young. Yeah! I've been doing lectures, Mikali, for ilang years na ba? I've been doing this for 21 or 22 years now. Uh, to, Hi, Sir John. From St. Louis, Davao before. Oh, hello to all my students there in Davao. Thank you. I'll open my new blank page now to learn from you. No problem. Uh, nurse, I see. Thanks for sharing, sir. I'll watch all your videos here. So YouTube planning to take NCLEX soon. Sure. Thank you so much. And we have Ronald Serrano Dizon. Hi, sir. Hello. Yeah, just let me know if you want if you want other topics na gusto niyo i-discuss ko. I will. So stay healthy guys. Actually to be honest, nar naririnig ko na yung naririnig ko na yung uh, laundry machine ko no nag uh, alarm na tapos na. I'll I'll fix that in a bit. Sabi ni Man Search Hi sir. Sabi naman ni Oh, andiyan ka pa. Michaelis Gamepad, Pedia Sir John. GBS uh, Neuro Sir, GBS Neuro. Galebarre syndrome. Your Galebarre syndrome is a form of an autoimmune. Okay, it is characterized by demyelination of your PNS. Okay, peripheral nervous system causing weakness, paralysis. Okay, starting from the lower extremities going up. And usually your GBS is associated with a history of pulmonary or GI infections. And with Deb, good morning, sir. Good morning din po. Kumusta po kayo? Neuro. Meron kaya ako na discuss na neuro. Please check sa mga na-stream ko dati. And here, Bench Seed sabe watching from Fremont. Fremont, where's that? Love your lecture, Fremont. Narinig ko na yan. Ay, Vermont pala yung narinig ko, sorry. <laughs> Fremont, Vermont. They sound synonymous. Um, here, sir, maternal, please. Sir, send me please your latest video to study. Sure. Anong video ba? Anong video ba yung pinagsasabi nyo? So, maternal... Matagal-tagal ako hindi nag-lecture ng maternal. Anong specific topic sa maternity? California. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Fremont. Saan banda yan? Is it near LA? Is it SoCal or, or what? Kaya pala sabi ko, parang narinig ko ng free, uh, Fremont. Uh, sabi ni N. Wedteb, 
Oh, ah, sa Bay Area. Okay. I hope to visit that place soon. Nasa ano ako? Nasa Minneapolis. Sabi ni Ed, batch 14 ako, sir. Batch 14. Oh, you have a class today, right? May class kayo, batch 14, di ba? Okay, sir. Kasi, in, in, sino ba lecture niyo dapat ngayon? And hello to Zell uh, Solenga. Hello, Sir John from Abu Dhabi. Hello. Tapos na po hanggang 11. Okay. What concept, what concept did he discuss? And yun know, na yung humihingi ng video, please uh, tell me ko anong video yun. And if I have, I can send it to you. And for those who are planning to take the examination soon, uh, local board examination or the NCLEX, please feel free to drop a message. And uh, I will see what I can do to help you guys. So anyway, I hope you learned something if you reached this part of video stream. Natin. Thank you so much. So, you know, we don't renal failure. So, Miss... Ano to? Miss ko na nga, miss ka na, ano daw? Miss ka na ng SPLE, PNA, UAE group. Oh my God. I miss you too guys. I miss you kayo lahat. Ilang kayo noon sa mga sudyante ko? 200 plus? Oh my God. I, I hope to see you soon. No prob. Uh, welcome po, Michaelis Gamepod. Uh, ito may nag-message sa akin. Sagit lang ah. Ano to? Here. Sagit lang. May nag-message privately. Oh, okay. Tell me, anong part doon nahirapan kayo? Saan part? Ito po, uh, message and clicks po, SATA problems always, please, strategy. Sa select all that apply, uh, first, huwag kalimutan kasi ang select all that apply, may mga, meron na po tayong partial scoring, which is a good thing. Kasi dati, di ba, sa select all that apply, kung kulang na select mo na option or sobra yung na select mo na option, automatic malina, walang partial scoring. Pero ngayon, meron pong partial scoring. Okay. So, sa select all that apply, kailangan mo talaga ng solid foundation ng concept. Okay? Wala po siyang test-taking strategy sa select all that apply. You really have to understand the concept to get it correctly. Okay? You really have to understand yung concept mismo. Uh, it all for SATA or sa si NGN the partial? Yung NGN partial, yung isa naman na hindi siya select all the, hindi siya, uh, ano daw? Is it all SATA or sa si NGN the partial? NGN partial. Ah, y yung partial scoring, yung NGN, kasi dalawa yan eh, may multiple response lang at saka multiple response N. Yung multiple response, yun yung select all that apply. So, ibig sabihin, may select all that apply lang at may select all that apply N. Okay? Ano yung pinangkaiba? Yung select all that apply N, ibig sabihin, sasabihin sa'yo kung ilang options ang kukunin mo. So, for example, select four correct options. Ibig sabihin, ang select all that apply mo, dapat apat ang pipiliin mo. Yun yun. So yun po ang partial scoring. Yung isa naman na select all that apply lang or multiple response lang na walang N, yun po ang uh, plus minus scoring. Ibig sabihin, pag may nakuha kang mali, ididedak siya sa actual score mo. But, the, the, but there is no negative final score. The lowest score you get is zero. Okay. And Eliza said, where will I find mga videos nyo po? Usually nasa YouTube, pero yung YouTube ko kasi na channel, 
old na yun ang mga videos pero somehow nakakatulong pa rin pero may mga videos na kasi akong bago you let me know drop a message dito sa Facebook and then let me know kung anong concept na hirapan ka and I'll, I can I can I, and I will see kung anong maitutulong ko po sa nire-request mo na concept welcome po message Other questions? Okay, greetings muna tayo dito. Uh-huh. Hello to Reese AG. Hello to Jem Salmorin, Les Gagan, Ronald Dizon, Alicia Encila, Jennifer Reyes, Cora Zin. Thanks for watching. Joe and Coronel. Team Nuts. Ara ng pangalan na to. Hello to Christian De Los Martinez. Or Mar- Martires, sorry. Hello to Jenny Adon. Hello to Laika Makapagal, Teresita Angala. Thanks for watching. And Web Ted. Sino pa dito? Iba mga ano na to question. Hello to G. Ross. Hello to Mary Joy Cortez Rapisora. Hello to Marites Emanuel Rufo. Thanks for watching. And Mona Lisa Quiano. And to Eliza Martinez Hernandez. Thanks for watching, guys. And here's a question. Uh, next week, sir. Ano daw? Next week, sir, sa klase mo. May explain namin. Hirap kasi sa chat. <laughs> okay, sige, sige, sige po. Sir, ako, pahingi ng copy ng live nyo ngayon if recorded, sir. Okay. Sure. This is recorded, actually. Kasi I'm using a live stream and yung live stream ko, meron siyang number of hours na recorded siya. So, I can send this this stream to you guys. And here, uh, thank you for the shared knowledge. No problem po. So, again, take good care of yourself. Take good care of your health. Drink a lot of water. Okay? And hello pala. Hello po, sir, from Davao. Men sitch. Copy, copy ng ano, ng itong stream na to. Sure, sure, I will. Okay, so just, just send a private message sa akin sa Facebook and I will see, I will give you, I will give you a copy of the video. Okay? So just, just tell me kung video yung kailangan nyo and uh, med search, a med search. And then I can send you, I can send you a link or a copy. Okay, thank you so much guys for staying. God bless everybody. Keep safe and uh, eat well, stay healthy. I'll see you again in the next stream. Bye for now.